This is the Party Political Playlist. So, Colin's with us for the next hour. Um, we're going to be asking some of the questions that you guys have tweeted in, um, which is at Nerve Radio. And uh, also, we've got a few questions on the Facebook group, a few things that um, just general topics we're going to be covering. Uh, but also, uh, Connor's picked all the music for today's show. Um, so, we'll be, uh, we'll be asking him the reasons behind his choices, I suppose. Yeah, so should we start with a the song then? Sure. Um, first song you've got down on the list is uh, Boney M. Bonnie M. Um, any oh. any reason any story behind this track? This is the Rivers of Babylon. Yes. Yeah, it's actually the first song I ever remember hearing on the radio. I spent the first seven years of my life living in Northern Ireland in Belfast, and I remember about the age of six, my father bought a new digital clock radio, uh, and I was playing with it and fast forwarding it. And I, as, you know, the stupidity of a child or the innocence of a child, I asked my dad if you fast forwarded through the twenty four hour clock. Could you then get tomorrow morning's news today? <laughs> um, and, and this I just remember very vividly. It's the first song I ever heard on the on the radio. Live from the Nerve Radio studios, this is the Party Political Playlist with Harry Monday and Liam Southall. Okay, then you're listening to Nerve Radio, um, Rivers of Babylon. That was a that was a good song. Kind of uh, one of those ones you forget about. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those cult classic tunes that you c- you can never like dislike because it's. Uh, it's, but it will never be recognised as a, uh, gr- a uh, you know, as a, a classic, classic pleasure. Yeah, 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 yeah. You wouldn't bury it in a time capsule, no, but I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a good song to listen to. <laughs> yeah. We were just saying during the record that um, there's a musical, isn't there? It's a Boney M musical in uh, at the West End. Yeah, and Connor, you said you'd seen it. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, was it was enjoyable. Yeah, I bet there was some, I because I bet there's loads of songs that you kind of forget that yeah. Boney M actually did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Um, I suppose we should start off, really, and just kind of give you a chance to introduce yourself as... You know, to anyone who's not aware of who you are, um, just, you know, who you are, what you do. And yeah, well, I'm, the, I'm obviously the Conservative parliamentary candidate for Bournemouth West, which now includes two areas from Poole that have come into the new constituency. And for the first time um, in memory, the university will now be part of the Bournemouth West constituency. So the university is going to have a Bournemouth MP, which seems sensible, um, given that it is Bournemouth University. Um, I live on Westcliff Road. Um, I'm a local resident. Um, before that, I lived up in Southampton for about 18 years. That's where I went to university. Um, but came down here when I was selected in 2008. What did you uh, study at university? I did modern history and politics with philosophy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds actually, like three actually, degrees in one. Yeah, and I actually didn't do any of the philosophy. I went to one philosophy seminar right at the beginning, <laughs> and they were all debating whether they, they were there or not. Uh, and I sort of said, well, we're self-evidently all here. You know, we can see each other. We're all <laughs> sitting on chairs. And they said, how do you know the chair's not here? Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> so I said to them, well, look, listen, I'll tell you what, you can all debate in about two minutes' time whether I'm here or not, because I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Were you ever there? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Are we here now? <laughs> <laughs> OK. So we, we asked you to come forward with a, a playlist of all the tunes mm. that you, you know you were into. I mean, how did, you, how did you shape that playlist? What sort of decisions went into it? Did you look through your iPod and look at the top ten played songs, or was there some sort Yeah, there was a bit of that, and there was a bit of um, songs that I remember from different times in my life. You know, when, when I was graduating, Michael Jackson's Earth song was um, in the charts for ages and ages, and when I went to... When I finished my A-levels, I did a few months in um, Australia, visiting the um, the religious order that actually brought me up. My headmaster had gone there to live for two years, so I went out there and I went to the cinema to see um, Robin Hood um, and everything I do was uh, in the charts then, yeah. and that was the, the theme for that. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's a mixture of different reasons. Okay. And some I just like. Yeah, sure. Okay, well, uh, should we go through another song? Yeah, um, or we could... Should we... I was just thinking. Uh, one thing we asked everyone else, kind of, when we asked mm. them their first introduction bit, was we said if there was if the, if they, you could only change one thing for Bournemouth, if you had to if you had to prioritise one absolute kind of thing you'd choose, what, what do you reckon it would be? I'll tell you the the one really clear promise that I'm making that if I'm elected on Thursday, I'll start work on on Friday. The government recently changed the visa requirements for students, um, and Bournemouth has more language schools per head of population than anywhere else outside London. And they're absolutely vital to the local economy. A load of people come here to learn English at the language schools, then come on to go to university here. A lot of them stay when they're here and host families, giving extra income to local people. And the government have changed the requirements now so that you actually have to learn English, sorry, know English, before you can come to England to learn English, and that seems to me to be absolutely stupid. So you have to almost have a certain level yeah, of English you've all, before you've you can actually have, get in yeah, the country. You've basically got to have now GCSE equivalent 
um, in English before you can come to an English language school. And that is just super nuts, in my judgment. Um, and they've also changed the thing where if you come on a student visa, you then have to go back to your home country and reapply before you can get an extension to your visa to come back and perhaps go on to do uh, a university degree. That's absolutely nuts, and I want to start work on Friday morning to sort that out, because that's going to be really damaging to Bournemouth's economy, to the language schools, and to the university. That's a tangible. Uh, so one of the questions uh, that we got tweeted in, mm. um, which is, I think it's going to be quite a hard, difficult question to answer. Um, <laughs> so the question is, uh, if we, from David C20 says, if we lived in a society where you weren't allowed to vote for your own party, mm. who would you vote for? Good God. <laughs> it's tricky. It's very tricky. Um... I'd be inclined, if they were standing here, to vote for the original Liberal Party, um, who were very much in the sort of the Gladstonian free market, um, civil liberties, um, common law, freedom under a rule of law. Those would be the sort of values I'd look for in a party. Um, I'd obviously argue that those are embodied now in the current Conservative Party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, oh, that's interesting. Interesting it's, question. Um, yeah, really good question. Well Thank done. Uh, cheers, Dave, for that. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to meeting you sometime. <laughs> uh, um, so another song you picked is Michael Jackson, Earth Song. Yeah. Is there any particular reason behind this choice? It was around the time, that was sort of in the, in the charts around the time that I graduated. And it's a sort of, when you listen to the words of it, it's sort of what life's all about, what direction you're going in, what are we here for sort of thing. Um, and I think it's, that's when you graduate or when you're coming up to graduation, it's sort of the end of, in a funny way, it's the end of your childhood. Um, it's the end of your formal education. You're about to go out into the world on your own, in your own right. Um, and it's a very pivotal moment in anyone's life, I think because uh, the decisions you take will sort of chart the course for the next couple of decades of your life. Um, and I just remember listening to it when I was in the process of graduating just after and thinking what I wanted to do with my life and what direction I wanted to take. That's, it, just, it, it, it evokes a memory of a particular time in my life. Hey, good day, This is um, Michael Jackson's Earth Song, then, on Nerve Radio. Live from Talbot Campus, this is Nerve Radio. Okay, then, that was a song, Michael Jackson. Uh, Connor, you said before the uh, before the song that uh, you're talking about graduation and mm. uh, becoming an adult then. Uh, so what, at what point did you decide, you know, politics was a career path you wanted to take? I'd always been really interested in it, Liam, I mean, way back um, from my school days. Um, the school I went to in, in St Albans was run by a religious order, and I always remember them saying that Brother Clement, who was my headmaster, saying, you're very privileged to be here. But with that privilege comes a responsibility to give something back, to do something. So I'd always been interested in it. And I remember there wasn't exactly a moment where I decided I want to go into politics. Mm. But in the sixth form, we'd done a project at a local um, psychiatric hospital. And we'd gone in and we'd taken, basically cleared a, a rough area of garden and worked with residents, built a summer house for them, painted their doors different colours rather than the uniform grey that the health service had given them. And people who'd been resident there for sort of 20, 30 years for the first time were coming out of themselves because they had a meaning and a purpose and a routine and a role. And then about two years later, Virginia Bottom, and it was a Conservative government did this, introduced care in the community. But they didn't make sure there was care in the community before they took away the provision of the old Victorian mental hospitals. And I saw one of the, the guys we worked with, one of the residents, begging on the streets of St Albans. And I actually just thought, this is sick, that this, is, this guy is a victim of a bad political decision. And I actually then thought, this is something I want to do. I, I don't want to be somebody who sits at the sidelines complaining about it. I want to try and be in the middle of it, influencing things. And then I went to Southampton University and I got involved. The, the 92 general election was happening um, in my first year. And the local MP then, who was the Minister for Roads, Chris Chope, he's now the MP for Christchurch, I got involved in his campaign and I just found it absolutely fascinating. And I started meeting some of the senior players in, in the Conservative Party then, Norman Tebbett and Margaret Thatcher came down to support him. Um, and I just decided I want to get involved in this. And I've just been involved ever since. When you were, uh, you were at uni, did you say 92? Yeah, I graduated uh, in 94. I was at university from 91 to 94. Okay, so were you, you were just prior to tuition fees coming in, is that yes, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So um, I suppose the, the question we kind of, lots of people have tweeted in about yeah. is, is tuition fees mm. and what, are your, what is your take on tuition fees? Should we have them? Should we not? I think, I mean, I think there's a, a consensus now that they're here. 
Um, I think we need to look at um, the means testing of them. We need to look at ways, I think we need to look at ways of involving businesses in sponsorship for students. I think there should be much more tie-up between local businesses and um, the universities and the communities that they operate in. There is, of course, now the question about whether the, the cap should be taken off. And, you know, I'm going to say this because this isn't necessarily the most popular position, but the government...